Hello, it's Friday and I'm Nystar and this is Ask a Pansexual. And this week's topic is how did you discover pansexuality? Um, for me it all started with an epiphany. <laughs> and this is gonna sound stupid, but I was watching the show Being Human US and there was a character who I immediately felt attracted to in a non-sexual way. And it was this attraction that really opened the floodgates of sexual my sexuality in general. Because before this, up until this point, I had just been going along with the, you know, heteronormative, you know, assume that you're a heterosexual until proven otherwise kind of thing. And actually I had been thinking about my sexuality a little bit before this because I had noticed my attraction to various people other than males before, but it was this, epif this character who brought about the epiphany that pushed me to further look into the topic. And this character happened to be female, but what really struck me was the non-sexual nature of my attraction and the fact that she was female had nothing really to do with my attraction at all. You know, that was like coincidental. That wasn't, that wasn't, my attraction wasn't directed at that at all or didn't stem from that at all. Does that make sense? So anyways, after this epiphany, I started looking into, well actually, after this epiphany, you know, immediately what came to my mind was bisexuality, because like most people, you know, you have some basic, very basic knowledge of what bisexuality is. You've heard of it before. It's a pretty well-known orientation. So, you know, the first thing that came to my mind was, am I bisexual? And my understanding of bisexuality was really limited then, extremely limited. But, you know, based on that extremely limited knowledge that I had, I immediately dismissed bisexuality. But I should note that now I do actually identify as both biromantic and panromantic, but that's a story for another video. Anyways, I dismissed bisexuality and then I went looking into orientations that I had never heard of before. I specifically went looking for orientations that I weren't fam that I wasn't familiar with because all the ones that I did know of didn't fit. So I googled, I Wikipedia, <laughs> past tense Wikipedia, and yeah, I've rediscovered asexuality. I'd actually come across the term asexual before, but I discovered asexuality again, and through discovering asexuality again, I discovered demisexuality, and yeah, I, at that point, I decided that I identified as, I decided that the identity of demisexual fit me. But still, that did nothing to explain, you know, my non-sexual attraction. That just explained that, you know, I don't experience sexual attraction except under certain circumstances. What about the other attraction that I so obviously felt towards this character and towards other people? So I went searching even more and eventually I came across pansexuality on Wikipedia, I think it was. And I thought it was awesome. I was so happy that I wasn't, I'm not the only person who whose attraction, regardless of whether it's sexual or not, wasn't, I don't know, was, I don't know, it <laughs> puts a good way to explain this, that my attraction didn't compl directly stem from someone's gender, it happens regardless of what someone's gender is, and I was just really happy to find that I'm not the only person who felt that way. So at that point, I went looking all over the internet for anything related to pansexuality that I f could find. 
and I started identifying as a demi pansexual. Demi for a demisexual, pansexual for, you know, pansexual. The demisexual described my lack of sexual attraction until certain circumstances happened, and then the pansexual covered the romantic, aesthetic, sensual attraction, and sexual attraction when it did manifest itself in me. But not long after that, I realized that I am in fact not demisexual. I am in fact asexual. And so that what was pansexual in my identity label became panromantic. I was a panromantic asexual, and I still am. I still identify as a panromantic and biromantic asexual. But really, discovering romantic orientations, like, that was freaking mind-blowing. I mean, discovering pansexuality was mind-blowing. But discovering romantic orientations, you know, that there isn't just sexual orientation, that there isn't just sexual attraction involved in sexuality, discovering romantic orientations, that was just fucking awesome. Um, I know that I understand some people don't like labels, don't like new words, they feel like the term pansexual or romantic orientations in general are unnecessary, superfluous, don't need them, they just don't like new words that feel unnecessary to them. But me? I'm a linguist <laughs> and oh my god, to me the more words the better because these new words enable people like me to better communicate their attraction to better describe themselves to other people. And oh my god, thank god for the ace community coming up with these new terms like panromantic, biromantic, heteromantic. Just where would I be right now without those words? Whew. Oh my god, I should like... I'd be so awesome to like do a master's degree in like linguistics and queer studies. Oh my god, that'd be so awesome. If only I wasn't poor. But anyway, I've kind of gone I've kind of gone off topic. So yeah. It was this kind of wiggly road. I mean I found pansexuality pretty straightforward. I mean pretty quickly. But to actual my identity isn't didn't stop at pansexual there was kind of a to it but yeah now all's good <laughs> anyway that's all i have to say this week i'll see you next week bye